40 Days in Poznan with Piotr Pilashak. My name is Piotr Pilashek and I'm a Polish luthier based in Poznan, in Poland. My name is Gino, I'm a Chinese luthier based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. I'm in this series of videos, I will continue my current work and I will show you some specific steps in my violin making. In these 40 days, I will start a new violin with Piotr. I will try to learn as much as I can from the very best. So you currently just finished carving the squirrel. We can say this is like a signature of the maker. For me, I probably need to put like 20 gouges to make a squirrel. I, I know that many people, they use a lot of gouges, and, but for me, gouge is just a tool mm. just to transfer something that I have in my head uh, onto the wood. So um, I don't really need that many tools. Um, I just need the ones that they fit the, the job. Once the violin will start aging, which is a natural process, you, all the marks will start uh, unveil. So mm -hmm. I think this is actually the kind of beauty of it, that the beauty of new instruments. This kind of flutting now, it's just roughly done with a gouge. Yeah. I would just take the sharp knife and clean it with yeah. a knife. You really prefer to use the knife to cut the chamfers, right? Mm, yes, that's true. And I saw you use it with different angle, different direction. I think it's just more precise for me. You it's... mean the knife is more, more mm -hmm. precise? Mm -hmm. For me, the chamfer looks nice when it's flat, straight. Mm -hmm. um, so in many places, I start very fast with small chisel. Yeah. But then when I correct something, I correct it with a knife because then I can look around and I see if there is something that disturbs the line because mm. I just want to have a nice flow of the lines through all the directions mm. that the chamfer is going very smoothly. So when I see that there is some bump or something disturbing the flow, I just can take the knife and just chick, 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 yeah. correct it. The tricky thing with the scroll is that if you work on the shapes of the volute, mm. quite often on the beginning you don't really have a chamfers. Mm. And once you make the chamfers, it can change. change everything. Yes. So it's really difficult to do anything with it. You just yeah. have to have experience and imagine how it will look like. Well, first, I'm working on the shape of the volute from the side and from the front. And I do this with um, gouges, uh, with the chisel gouges and actually a lot of uh, small thumb planes. So normally, I always think if you want to make the scroll look more 3D dimension, mm -hmm. you need to cut it really deep. I think it might be wrong because I think your scroll uh, in this surface it's not that deep at all. No. It looks more fluid. It's like a liquid. It's like if I put a drop of water, the water just goes this way. Mm. It's like when you look at the scroll from the three quarters, mm. that this is more, there is a proportion between yeah, this. Right? Yes, exactly. Those walls are, you know, it, it's connected together. So let's see this. Mm. You don't simply make it deep. You make it like more like a music. So it goes flat and deep flat and deep and to create yes. this Yes, movement. but as well, as well, even when you dig the floating, when you make the, the depth, you know, you have to, it has to have some sense. It's not just you go deep because, mm. because you want to have it free. You make it in a connection, you know, my, the, the bottom of, uh, of my floating actually goes quite, it's quite coherent with this line. Mm -hmm. This is an example, the narrowest point of the scroll. So when I carve my floating, I want to be want this part to be as well the deepest point. So it goes, it's very coherent, those two lines. They go well very together. Then again, the scroll is getting actually quite wide here. You want to get it stronger. So mm -hmm. I make the flitting a bit more flat. And then looking from this side, then this whole part is getting, it's being stronger, not only because it's very wide here, but as well because the flitting is stronger. It's not that deep. So this is how Piotr Pileszak carve the squirrel. I see you in the next steps. If you have any questions, just let us know and uh, we'll try to answer them in the next video. See you in the next video.